How's it going, everybody? It's Pilot Flame, and we are back with a, another FPL stream here. It's a Game Week 7 deadline-ish, kind of, sort of, maybe stream. Uh, we have to do it because of the Game Weeks and how they're kind of unfolding. So we have games on Friday that start uh, around, you know, mid to late afternoon for me. I can't get home in time in order to do them, unfortunately. I can only do them in the evening times or if it's on a weekend first thing in the morning like we have been doing when they were on Saturdays so that's only going to be for one more week after this week and then it looks like they're going to be back to the Saturday games for midweek streams it's going to be uh, a little bit better so like when there's midweek games like double game weeks and stuff like that um, and or you double prem games so it'll be like they play a prem game on Saturday Sunday uh, maybe Monday and then some teams play Tuesday Wednesday and then this game's on the weekend because that's going to happen later on in the season. I can do those, but I could doing them the night before is perfectly fine because the games are going to be, you know, they're going to be the next day. So it's not that big of a deal. With Fridays, it just makes it a little bit like kind of awkward just because it's like it's almost a weekend, but not really. But uh, yeah, we, 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 we move on. We move on. Anyway, if you don't see it, you get to see it on YouTube as well anyway, which you should go subscribe to if you haven't done so already and if you're seeing this on youtube make sure to hit that subscribe button also follow us over on twitter and twitch twitch is where we are doing this uh stream and where you see this pod uh right now and i post it up to youtube after the fact also i want you to guys go over and check the poll out that's over on youtube let me know if you want to change the preview times because i see people come in later on in the stream for for that one I can also potentially do the deadline streams a little bit later too when it's like midweek slash like not on a Saturday morning like I normally do. So that could be something uh, that's, you know, a lot better uh, for 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 you guys. Um, and um, yeah, just let me know. Let me know because I'm thinking about moving it. I m may have a future commitment coming up that may push back if I have to do this stream on Mondays. So we'll see. We'll see how, how it all goes. But uh, yeah uh well that's why it's good to you know make sure to check out the the pinned comment on the latest video because that'll tell you exactly what time it's going to be and also any updates on twitter if we have to move streams or change times and that sort of stuff that's where you get all the updates for that sort of stuff but uh moving into the fpl sort of things actually just before i do that uh tomorrow skywalker thank you for the follow as well but now Let's get into the, the FPL stuff here. So we're going to be looking at some, some you know, more goal involvement oriented defenders. We're going to bring up my offense and defense stats table. And we're going to look at some other, you know, tables as well in terms of like the goals imminent table. We may look at some more public ones that may be more interesting. But uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of different things that, that could, could change this week. I also have a red flag in my team, which I didn't know about until I got home. Uh, earlier today and that's going to be Castagne so we're going to have to take a look at the uh, look at that he might not be back until after the international break so we're going to have to look at options as to who we could bring in for him um and yeah we're going to look at like I said uh my lineup's pretty much the same I still haven't chosen my captaincy maybe I finalize it here on this stream but if not you'll definitely see or at least I'll try to put a post out um on twitter if i do change it from what it is at the end of this video which will go up as soon as the stream is done but that's enough waffling let's get into it so as you can see there's the stats uh on my uh on my screen here over to my left hand side you guys right hand side uh how we did in the game week those are the final stats so my uh, my game week rank, uh, what was my game week rank? Actually, I could potentially make that a little bit better. It was 3 million, so I did get it right. Um, it, it was, I just went off the estimates, uh, from live rank, which is uh, a very useful site if you guys don't know. It basically tells you what your score in your current rank is, uh, during, you know, midweek, basically. You don't have to wait until the end of the, end of the, the, the games at the end of the day, in order for your rank to be refreshed a live rank if you just look it up it, you'll probably find it uh but yeah this other team is currently set up at the moment unfortunately uh we have a red flag uh and two yellow flags which isn't great so if castagna doesn't play we need mitchell to play unless we want lampty to come in and we brought in kilman to make sure that that doesn't happen so i think i might have to take a hit to rectify this situation because castagna I, you know, I thought he could be okay in the next couple of fixtures, 
But if he's got a hamstring injury and is expected back on the 21st of, uh, of November, that means he's going to be back after the international break, which will explain why he wasn't in... Uh, uh, I'm not sure if he was actually in the team for... Uh, uh, for um, uh, for Leicester, uh, let me actually check that uh, while I'm here. Uh, if he played uh, tonight, uh, let's see, lineups. Well, he wasn't in the team at all, so he must definitely be... Uh, uh, he must be uh, injured for sure. Yeah, we see that it's, it's on like Sky Sports and stuff with hamstring injury. Yeah. So he must have picked that up uh, in training or, or something of that nature, which, you know, it isn't great. It's not great at all. And I'm just going to actually take a look quickly at the potential price rises tonight just to see if I have to check for anything that would be of a worry. Doesn't look like, I mean, Hamas is going to go down, but we've got so much value on him, it doesn't really matter. Uh, let me just make sure that Castagne, uh, Castagne is going down quite heavily, but I don't think he's going to be going down enough to go down tonight. So I might have until the deadline tomorrow to make up my decision, but we may do it on stream just for fun, just for you all that are watching. And that's where I believe we got cut off here. So in those fixtures in the first game, I like to typically have, uh, I don't know if any anyone else is like this, but I typically like to have players in every game or for the most part pretty much every game right so in the wolves game we have pedence and kilman who are going to be you know actually playing and then we have a mitchell on our bench who is going to be playing against them but he is on our bench so we don't care what he does unless he comes on which we'd have to rectify the situation with castania if we wanted to make sure that didn't happen regardless we obviously want Wolves to keep a clean sheet in this game, which they have been doing in the last couple, apart from the, the, the Newcastle blip that they had late on, which was a fantastic free kick, by the way. Soft free kick to give away, but it was a fantastic free kick to score. Um, and Pedenz, basically what I was saying was, before we got cut off, was that he gets into situations where he's always involved, always getting shots off, always like dribbling past players, finding space. It's just the final product that he needs. He gets in, needs to get into a good enough position where it's like guaranteed chance. And I think that, you know, if they play a 3-5-2, we might see the better of Pedence when he can play just in behind the likes of uh, Raul Jimenez. So I think Wolves are trying to be more attacking, but with the 3-4-3 setup, they lose control over the midfield battle sometimes, which is a bit, you know, concerning for them considering they're playing three center backs already and two typically deeper lying midfielders or... or you know, people who aren't as creative in the final third, like with the intricate passing, like Pedence, like Neto, like these sorts of guys that are going to dribble past players and, and basically create the create the goals. You have the likes of Matinho, who is good in and around the box, but he, he kind of reminds me a little bit of how Juan Mata plays for Manchester United. If he can sit on the edge of the box and kind of pick a team apart over 90 minutes, then yeah, sure. But Wolves aren't that type of team. They're not going to retain a lot of possession. Uh, maybe against Palace they will, which Matinho might be good in that so in that sort of scenario. But against other teams, so like uh, let's let's go with their. Um, might have to refresh the page here. If it will work for me, there we go. Uh, do, 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 do. So game week eight, who do they play? They played do, 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 Leicester. So Leicester will probably have the majority of the ball and. Wolves will probably have to play on the counter-attack, which is, will play into Wolves' this more natural style, which I think is more counter-attacking based. I don't see them sitting on the outside of opponent's box trying to pick people apart. Um, a bad matchup stylistically for, for Wolves could potentially be Southampton, who can pick the ball off in midfield and then, and then you know, uh, break on them. But we'll have to see. They're trying to be a bit more attacking, which, you know, I rate Nuno Espirito Santo uh, for doing I just think that in previous, you know, the last couple of seasons, Wolves have been, we can counterattack. We can play against the teams that are going to have the majority of the ball quite well and quite comfortably. It's just when we have to go versus teams like Burnley, like Palace, these teams that just don't want to ever score. They just struggle against because they don't have that type of more invention further up the pitch. And I think they could potentially get that if they play Pudence in like a number 10 style of role. 
or like kind of playing him as a shadow striker rather than having him out on the left hand side because we see he's very good in more central areas um, and Jimenez could definitely be helped out by that uh, as well. It's not like Perez has to stay strictly in the middle. He can float out wide, but I think Wolves could definitely uh, definitely do well in this game. It's just going to be Palace have Van Arnholt back, which could provide a bit more cover at the back. And it'll be interesting to see if Mitchell does lose his place. Sheffield United versus City. I don't have anyone in this game and I'm a bit worried about it because if De Bruyne is back, he's arguably a better player to have back than the likes of Aguero or Jesus. But again, when City do play a false nine system it does diminish their attacking threat a bit so we'll have to see on that front uh, but i am worried a bit about de bruyne and sterling in this game and not having foden i like foden as an asset since the beginning of the season um i even looked at potentially having him on my bench before the start of game week one and he would have done okay thus far and it you know 6.5 million for somebody who's gonna pretty much start every game uh he looks to be quite good yes city rotation this city rotation that but i think he's the only real player that can play alongside kevin de bruyne when fernandinho is fully fit and they put fernandinho as like the sitting player just to just sit in front of the back four and just do what city does best which is press high up the pitch retain the ball never really having to defend and just basically blitz the team to death Burnley versus Chelsea. Now, this could be a bit of a banana skin for Chelsea because they're, um, you know, a type of team that has been, you know, trying to shore up their defense. And they're going to have to compensate some of that if they want to be able to break down Burnley. I mean, Spurs, who have been flying, showed that they had a bit of a, you know, a tough time versus Burnley. They only ended up getting the one goal. So it could be a bit, uh, a bit challenging for them. Do they have just as good a quality as Spurs? arguably if not better it's just their defense you know doesn't have that much height in it so they may be susceptible to some set pieces that Burnley take I still think that Chelsea should have enough uh, in them though for that uh, Liverpool versus West Ham let's actually take a look at um, at Antonio for a quick second here I believe he is oh, he's not red flag so he, he could he I, I think I saw reports saying that he could potentially be a uh, uh, be out longer than what they thought initially <clears throat> but um if he's fit then he could cause liverpool problems because they had um they had fabinho go off injured you know they're the most senior center back at the moment is joe gomez which is not ideal and they could definitely struggle uh in, on that front uh, defensively But I think that Liverpool will just revert back to type. They'll just do what Klopp did in the season where they got, uh, what was it, 98 points. They got like one point away from City. And we're basically neck and neck with them to the final game of the season. And basically they just scored more than their opponent. They didn't care if they conceded, really. Uh, they just wanted to make sure that they scored more than their opponent. And then they kind of evolved a little bit with Van Dijk, um, you know, fully involved in the team and and, and being being solid and, and properly integrated in uh, and become a real leader, then they ended up going on to just blitz the Premier League uh, with no problem. But I still think Liverpool should be able to come out of this game quite comfortably. Uh, Aston Villa, Southampton. So Aston Villa in the um, in the last game that they played, they pretty much got outclassed by Leeds. To to be perfectly honest, like Leeds could have scored in the first half, they could have scored in the second half. Aston Villa created, like, not many chances at all. Leeds created a lot of chances. Southampton is a team that will hurt you when they press you. So it's a type of situation where Ross Barkley and McGinn, who are two players that struggle to deal with the constant threat of a press in the midfield from Leeds, Southampton are going to do the same thing. And it's going to be a bit of a struggle for them. So we'll have to see how they adapt. You know, maybe since the game, I believe the Leeds game was uh, was at home for Leeds. Uh, where is it to? Oh, no, it was that actually at, at Aston Villa. So it's the same same stage, just different shirt colors and different um, different players. And, you know, it's a team from Southampton, not Leeds. So, but a similar style of playing in terms of, like, how they defend, really. So Aston Villa could struggle in this one. And I definitely see Southampton doing quite well in it. Um, but expect uh, Martinez, if Southampton are playing well, to make some saves. So if you do have him, don't worry about that too much. Everton should bounce back against Newcastle, even with their injury concerns. Arsenal versus uh, Man United. This could be a, you know, 
you know, potential slip up for United doing well in the Champions League and then drawing uh, to Chelsea how they did last week. Will they repeat the same thing? Who knows? Arsenal been a lot more defensive under Arteta. A lot of people think that he's been playing this, you know, great style of football. He's been pretty much just playing counter-attack football in a 3-4-3 system, really. Uh, and now with the likes of Thomas Partey, he could potentially experiment with that, but we still have yet to see that implementation and that, evol the, that evolution, as it were, uh, from uh, Mikel Arteta's Arsenal. So we'll have to see on that front. Uh, Spurs versus Brighton. Brighton should give Spurs a lot of space. It should be quite easy for Spurs, in my opinion. Fulham versus West Brom. I mean, I think West Brom could win that game, no problem. And then Leeds versus Leicester. I mean, with Castagne out, but Vardy back, it makes an interesting dynamic. They have some cover in at fullback with the likes of, you know, James Justin and whatnot. But I think Leeds will give them definitely a tour at time. But I think Leicester could just do pretty much what they did versus Arsenal for the most part. I just make sure they need to shore things up at the back because Leeds will create a lot of chances much more than what Arsenal did so and they have a lot more invention with a bunch of different players who are going to be constantly rotating but I think Leicester could definitely frustrate them enough to potentially get a draw or win out of it uh, we'll have to see kind of who shows up on the day but um, in terms of players playing so at the moment we know Castagna is not playing uh, so I wouldn't have a player in that game but normally I would I actually would have no players on either of these two games so that's kind of Unfortunate, but we Castagna could be replaced with a Leeds defender, which would be interesting to see. Uh, we have uh, two Spurs players, two Everton players, two Southampton players. So we have six players in this day in total. Uh, Lamptey will be on the on the bench, obviously for for uh, for me uh, from Brighton. Uh, we have two Liverpool players: no West Ham, no Burnley, no Chelsea, no City, no Sheffield United. So oh, and Burke would be on the bench. So he may play a key part if James Rodriguez is out. But uh, very light on the players uh, to start off with. So the first four games, four players have uh, averages out to be one each. But a lot of my players play on the Sunday uh, over half my team. Um, and potentially we could change that slightly um, with, uh, with a potential Leeds defender to kind of make up for the fact that Castagne is out. So... This is how the team currently lines up. I'm still undecided as to who to put in um, in his captaincy uh, option. But let's 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 go to uh, one of our one of our resources that we use here. Just going to maneuver this over. This is our goals imminent table. So if you don't know, this is from the Fantasy Football Scout members area. It's a table created by John T. And he's uh, fantastic at what he does and running the scout cast. And I would encourage you all to, if you want to see even more stuff like this, this is just the bare surface of some of the things that you can do with the Fantasy Football Scout members area. So make sure to go over there and subscribe to that and mess around with some of the tables. You can create your own tables. You have Rank My Team, Season Ticker, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, and make sure to go check that out. In terms of who's on the goals limit table, we have Alexander Mitrovic, who's had uh, three big chances total, and he's missed three big chances. He's had 19 goal attempts, 18 shots inside the box, and still hasn't scored as of yet. So he is definitely in there. I sold him a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Suchek, somebody who everyone was hyping up at the beginning of the season, has yet to score. Trossard, again, was very unlucky versus uh, United. As well as other games, he's been getting in and around the box and shooting. So again, somebody to look out for there. Rodrigo from Leeds could be an interesting prospect, but I think I think he's more of a facilitator uh, in in the way Leeds play. He's kind of one of these players like Harrison and, and Click and these sorts of players where they're constantly going to be in different positions depending on the state of the game and the flow of play. And I think that. He's just not really worth it in that regard. I mean, he is also considered a forward. If he was a midfielder, then maybe you could potentially look at something like that. But I just think as a forward, he's not going to be not going to be great. Mares, on the other hand, could be a great differential this week. And I kind of mentioned him in my Pep Roulette video. But 13 goal attempts, seven shots inside the box. He does create for himself uh, of those seven shots inside the box and 13 goal attempts, five shots on target. Um, and I think that he could potentially be somebody that could come into people's teams, especially if he's going to be playing. Because if he's playing in the false nine role, he's going to play it better, in my opinion, than Sterling. So even though it's not much better, but I think it is still better. And then Neto, another one similar price to Pedence. 
getting more involved as well. I think that uh, him and uh, Pedence are, are nicely priced, but it's just a matter of if Wolves are going to score, basically. So, yeah, that's the goals imminent table. And we're going to take a quick look at the season ticker. I forgot to bring that up. So I'm actually going to take a look after uh, this, uh, this game week. Uh, specifically because I can always just pick up defender for the best uh, the best uh, fixture this week so I'm gonna look at potential Castagne replacement so if we look at defense here sort by difficulty let me maneuver this a bit more centered there we go so if we look at defense we, we we look at at the table here and we see that in terms of just <laughs> up until game week uh, we want it up until so game week 8, 9, 10. We went up until game week 15, I think. Yeah, game week 15. So Aston Villa have the best run. We all know that uh, for from a defensive standpoint, which is why a lot of people brought in Martinez. Uh, West Ham are up there. Newcastle, who aren't great, but are up there. Everton are up there. City is actually up there. So if Laporte comes back in and... Is, is quite good then six million might not be too bad for him but again you want some attacking returns and being a center back at six million but on the expensive side brighton is technically up there even though they have liverpool at home and leicester away in their fixtures uh liverpool is also up there but again we know the shambles that they are at center back at the moment some teams down the bottom is actually spurs it's wolves west brom burnley's even down there so teams that um you know defenses some of them are usually quite good in wolves and burnley but some of them are quite bad in the likes of spurs and west brom and fulham could potentially be targeting those teams uh, to concede. Spurs have a pretty bad run of fixtures with Man City, Chelsea, Arsenal, Crystal Palace, Liverpool from game weeks 9 to 13. So it might not be ideal there. This this run is basically up until, like game week 15 is up until and till the end of the Christmas period, if I'm uh, correct in saying that. Game week 15, yeah. Oh, six, oh well, Game week 15 is effectively the end of the Christmas period because game week 16 would be half to the last possible time that you can activate your wild card for it going into the new year. So that would be uh, on that on that front. In terms of rotation, so defenders that we have currently, we have Kilman, who's a Wolves defender, and I think he's going to be playing pretty much most games, uh, if not all of them. As long as Johnny Otto is out, who is their usual left wing back. And he's probably going to be out until after the new year, at least. We have Lamptey, who plays for Brighton. And then we can look at potential uh, replacements uh, in uh, in defense. Particularly someone that could be a little bit cheaper. So, I was thinking of Ben Chilwell, who would get me a little bit more attacking returns. But his fixtures, you know, Sheffield United at home is, not, is pretty good. Newcastle is pretty good. Spurs at home is not ideal Leicester's not ideal Everton's not ideal Wolves is probably okay West Ham is is probably okay Arsenal is probably okay as well so some okay fixtures Leeds have Crystal Palace which is good Arsenal I think they can cause problems for just stylistically Everton's probably a bit rough Chelsea could be a bit rough West Ham should be fine Newcastle should be fine United could be hit or miss depends on what United type of team shows up and Burnley should be fine for them uh, overall so actually Leeds is higher up and close to Southampton and Crystal Palace who have, have some pretty good fixtures of their own in there um, so it looks like it could be Ailing or Dallas that potentially uh, comes in instead of Castagna which would free up some money it would just require a hit not something I wanted to do you know in in you know the game weeks uh, uh, to come uh, potentially but uh, because Castagne does have some nicer fixtures. So if you look at Leicester's fixtures from game week 10 onwards, you know, he's got Fulham, he's got Sheffield United, he's got Brighton, he's got Everton, he's got Spurs and United. So these these four, Fulham, Sheffield United, Brighton, Everton, could be quite good. But again, it says he's going to be back in after the international break. We'll have to see on that front because he misses this game week effectively. Next week, international break week. And then he's going to be back. So he's saying a hamstring injury to heal in three weeks. It's 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 a bit up in the air for me. I think I want to get rid of him uh, sooner rather than later if he's going to be out for a couple of weeks. Especially if I have a uh, you know a defender on the bench that I definitely don't want to play this week in Lamptey because I think he's going to concede a lot. 
and Mitchell could be losing his place, so I might end up with a big donut. Um, and, especially, and if Kilman doesn't start for whatever reason, that would be a bit of a, a sucker punch as well. Um, so Leeds could be, could be quite good. Now, let's see if they rotate well. That's the thing. So, uh, game week. Let's go to game week. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, I'm going to add in game week seven now. So, if we go to game week seven, we see that. So, Brighton obviously have Spurs. We don't want to play play them in that. Leicester play Leeds. So, again, it's the same fixture. So, again, not you know not the, the worst thing in the world. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove... All the teams. Can I highlight more than one? No, I can't. Okay, so I'm just going to remove all the teams that I don't want to basically take a look at. So we want to keep Brighton. We want to get rid of Leicester because Castagna would be going out the door. We would get rid of Southampton. Get rid of Wolves. Get rid of... Actually, no, we wanted to keep Wolves. Crap. Crap! Okay, refresh the season ticker. Okay, so want to keep Wolves. Don't want West Brom. Don't want Spurs. Don't want them. 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 Want to keep them. Don't want them. Don't want them. Don't want them. Keep Brighton. Don't want them. Don't want them. There we go. Got it. Okay, so game week 15. This is what we're kind of looking at. So, we're looking at mainly here. Home fixtures. And good fixtures. So, let's take a look at... Uh, let's take a look at these here. So, Leicester uh, at home for Leeds. Probably a decent fixture on paper. Not expecting a clean sheet, but maybe some attacking return, especially since they're they're kind of weaker at the back at the moment with players being out. Wolves, Crystal Palace at home, fantastic fixture. Those two, nice. Then Leeds play Crystal Palace, fantastic. And that's at Crystal Palace, which is typically when they're weaker. And then Brighton play Burnley, lovely. So we can play Brighton, uh, Leeds and Brighton defenders there. And we can play, we can bench, um, we can bench Kilman. <clears throat> then we have uh, Wolves versus at home to Southampton, but Leeds are also at home to Arsenal. And I think that Leeds versus Arsenal are probably going to be a bit more favorable for us because Leeds are a team that are going to create chances. Ailing and Dallas like to get forward, and those will be one of the two that I bring in. Whereas we would have Southampton, you know, we'd have Ings going against Kilman. And I think that Southampton could definitely score versus Wolves. Um, because they can just create chances. And then Brighton versus Aston Villa is probably a better fixture there as well. Then it's a bit rough because we have uh, Brighton at home to Liverpool. Wolves versus Arsenal, who could definitely keep a clean sheet there. But Leeds versus Everton isn't ideal, but we would have to play them. So that's one kind of iffy week. Then we have uh, Brighton at home to Southampton. Leeds away to Chelsea. Wolves away to Liverpool. Again, not the most ideal situation there, but again, we could potentially rotate some uh, players out there or just bite the bullet. If I had to, you know, pick right now in game week 10 and 11, I would say, um, I would say I would play the Leeds Wolves defender and then I would play the Southampton or the, 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 the Brighton Leeds defenders in, in 10 11. Just basically avoid Liverpool because they look to be as consistent as you can be uh then we play leeds and wolves because two home fixtures versus weaker opposition than leicester then we would play uh brighton and leeds defenders versus fulham and newcastle then we would play brighton and wolves because against burnley and sheffield united and then we would play brighton and leeds because of burnley and west ham so i think for the most part apart from game week 10 and 11 where it's a bit trickier i think we could potentially manage I think we could definitely potentially, uh, you know, manage manage that. And if we look back at um, back at our team here, um, you know, our other defender is is Robertson. We still might potentially have Mitchell in there as well. So maybe we may be, we may be able to get away with some things uh, in in regards to that and change some things up. Or maybe by that time we, we're looking at some slightly different defenders, or maybe certain things have changed um, in terms of that. So. 
So yeah, that's the season ticker there for you. Let's get rid of that. Don't need that. Okay, so this is the goal involvement, uh, the expected goal involvement uh, for defenders. So what this shows is the amount of goals that these defenders are being involved in. So you look at you look at the ones up there. You got Robertson, you have Ailing, you have Alexander Arnold, you have Keane, you have Masuaku, you have Boulder, you have Castagna. These defenders are all ones that are getting involved in terms of expected goals. Obviously, Castagna is injured. Ailing is 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 one that's that's definitely uh definitely up there and looks quite interesting. I'm actually gonna create. Um, a, a, a table here now uh, let's go my stats table uh, create a table uh, I'm gonna go uh, Dallas versus. I'm gonna call it Dallas versus Ailing and I'm gonna go for let's see so this is this is like kind of, kind of how you build a table so it's quite quite cool so we're gonna build one here so we're gonna attempt it Attempts cross from corners. Attempts from set plays. Big chances created. Um, chances created. Actually, let's just go corners and see what not attempts from cross corners. Um... Uh, crosses. Um, we want to do. We want to look for uh, like goal attempts, shots, shots inside the box. Shots on target. And then where's expected? Expected goal involvement. There we go. So players by player names. Create the table. So if I go to my stats tables, Dallas versus Ailing, go to view. Going to generate the table for me in a second so the players we want is we want uh dallas and ailing and then what you can do is you can uh only show the selected players and then we can see the the uh the stats here Let's see, can I make that any... Okay, what well, Dallas is... Can I move... Can I make these columns, like, skinnier? No, I can't. Unfortunately. But, uh, basically, I'll, I'll, I'll say that I'm gonna... I'm gonna sort them in, in terms of expected goal and bomb. So, Ailing is 1.33, whereas Dallas is 0.96. So, attempts from set plays, they both have had none. Big chances created, Ailing is 2, Dallas is 1. Chances created, Ailing 6, Dallas 3. Corners, they've both not taken corners. Ailing is crossing the ball more than Dallas is. Shots inside the box, Ailing has had 2, Dallas has had 3. And Dallas has had some shots, more shots on target. So, it looks to me, just straight up by numbers... By a slight margin, Ailing is a better attacking threat than the likes of Dallas. So that may have made our decision uh, for us uh, overall. In terms of uh, clean sheet potential, in terms of the underlying stats, we're going to take a look at uh, leads here. So, so we're going to uh, big chances conceded. So in terms of big chances conceded, Leeds do concede quite a lot of big chances and a lot of shots on target. Um, and they can see quite a lot of uh, goal attempts uh, on target. So clean sheet wise, not great. But I think Meslier is a very competent uh, keeper. And basically they're, uh, they're 
conceded goals minus their xg can their expected goals to be conceded is about right so basically the amount of goals that let um that leads concede is about right for the amount of chances they conceded so they're on par so technically they could have been a bit more unlucky and conceded more and if you like compare them to the likes of somebody uh who's conceded not very many so bernie's only conceded uh six big chances but they've conceded 3.88 more goals than what they should have because of just the i guess poor defending as it were um or maybe they were a bit unlucky so that's what this uh that's what this this column here is for so this says so xg so go xg conceded delta so this is goals conceded so this is the number of goals they conceded minus their expected number of goals they conceded so they've conceded 3.88 more goals than what they should have and if we look at the lowest uh on that uh forward so Leeds is in the top five for that so Aston Villa if you look have conceded um have expected to be conceded 1.79 more goals than what they have have done so already so they're actually doing a lot better than Crystal Palace is 0.56 Tottenham is 0.19 and Arsenal is 0.14 and then Leeds is basic break even so these four teams, Arsenal, Crystal Palace, Aston Villa, and Spurs have all conceded less goals than what they should have. So maybe a bit a uh, bit better defensively than we thought for Spurs. Uh, but Crystal Palace, we know, is a defensive outlet. Arsenal has been improving defensively and have shown to be quite sturdy uh, defensively overall. But yeah, that's what you can see in the, uh, in the members area. So make sure to go check that out. Make sure to subscribe to them. It is fantastic to see that sort of data. There's all kinds of stuff in there that you can do. And I think that it's just a great valuable tool. And it's something that I use for my videos in terms of like, you know, when I do certain picks for buy, hold, sell, for when I'm thinking about, you know, what transfers to make and that sort of stuff. And... What we're going to do is, based on those stats, we're going to basically take out Castagne. Now, if you look at our list view here, we brought in Castagne for uh, 5.6 million. He's gone up to 5.8 million, so we get 0.1 on him as well. Uh, Ailing uh, shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be injured because they just haven't played. Um, we could wait to the could wait to the press conferences, but I think Ailing's going to play. So. We'll put him in there. We'll make the transfer. Confirm the minus four. Because why not? Let's do it. And that's what the team is going to gonna look like uh, thus far. So now we know that for sure we have Robertson and Ailing playing in there. Because Castagne is out. If Kilmer doesn't play, then we can look to potentially have Mitchell. And if he doesn't play, then we have Lamptey. But at least now we know that we have at least two guaranteed starting defenders in there. If Kilman doesn't play, it's going to be a bit unlucky, but hopefully he's been good enough. I mean, his performances have shown that he's been quite good. I mean, from an FPL standpoint, uh, clean sheet, some bonus points there. Uh, clean sheet assist and some bonus points there. And was pretty rock solid up until they conceded the free kick uh, very late on. So, uh, looking, looking okay uh, overall. What I might do is now that i have let's let's do a bit of a a bit of a bit of swap a rooney here so i need a striker i don't have a striker okay we'll put in burke and then we'll put in kane or calvert instead of burke that didn't work okay burke instead of Kane, Calvert Loon instead of Kane, Calvert Loon instead of Burke. Did that do it? Nope, that didn't do it. I want to get all the shirts uh, of similar similar uh, color, so it looks uh, looks nice and looks nice and even. Um, see if I can get it to get it to get it to work. Maybe I have to take Ings off. So Ings, uh, uh. How am I going to do this? Kane off for Ings. Kane on for Burke. There we go. Now we're looking good. Now we have our team flanked by uh, uh, by red and white with a little mix of blue blue and orange uh, in the middle of the team. So it looks looks a lot, um, a lot nicer. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put the vice captaincy back onto Kane. 
and we'll save our team. I like my I like my team to, to, to look a bit, little bit organized. Um, also, Ailing typically plays right back, which is why he's on the right hand side. Robertson and Salah typically play on the uh, well, actually, no, Salah plays on the right hand side, but it's fine. We got our full back sorted out. Kilman's in the center, Robertson's on the right, Ailing's on the left, and everything is dandy in the world once again. Yeah, so this is how the team's gonna gonna line up uh, thus far. I did the transfer stream because it's always fun to see transfers live, and it is effectively a deadline stream. So this is something I could have done an hour before the deadline too, and I probably would have eventually done it. Um, and I just Ailing is the is I I think he's I think Ailing is the captain actually for Leeds. I'm pretty sure he's actually the captain. I could be wrong in that, but. Um, yeah, he, he can play pretty much, uh, you know, a bunch of different uh, positions. Dallas can uh, also play them and t tends to be more of the rotated man, as it were. But I think Ailing will definitely play pretty much every game, much like Dallas, whether it be in center back, right back, left back. Though They can all play a bunch of various different positions. But I brought him in because they rotate pretty decently overall. It also something that we can actually potentially look at is future transfers. So we made a defensive transfer early. So now that gives us 2 million to play with. So potentially we can now, we can go from Pedenz straight up to one of those mid-price midfielders. We can go to Jack Grealish. We can go to Phil Foden, who's only um, just over a million higher. We can uh, upgrade uh, Son straight up to almost straight up to depending on if he goes up more to a city mid which is something that could could definitely uh be uh quite helpful in the future we could also so if we go into a, a thing with three transfers let's say game week so game week uh what is it when is aston villa so game week nine aston villa play brighton so if we go into game week nine and we think Yo, City's on fire. They're going to blitz Spurs. Da, 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 da. We can get rid of Kane. We can get rid of Son. We can get rid of McCarthy. We can bring in... Martinez. We can bring in... Uh, let's just say Sterling, hypothetically. Um, and then we could bring in... If Jesus is fit, we could bring Jesus in. That is definitely an option. We don't want to make transfers that would be bad or we can go into that game week after game week uh nine so into game week 10 uh where city play burnley they play fulham they play united west Brom. you know these sorts of fixtures we can go from kane straight down to jesus or we can go from uh the likes of uh Pedence to foden it's just a straight swap that we can do just whenever we decide that Wolves' fixtures are bad. Like, Leicester could still be, you know, again, without Castagne. So, that could be easy pickings there. Southampton can definitely concede. You know, so it could be, could be something there as well. If we think that um, if, if City are going to do well versus Spurs, we can, you know, bring, bring Foden in. Foden in even earlier if we want against against Liverpool because they don't have much center backs going on there either and it all depends on kind of how they perform again Manchester United assets could be something as well so if Son basically goes up enough in price we could potentially go uh you know let's say uh Son to uh Son to Rashford uh Kane Kane down to uh, maybe Antonio's back fit or something like that. And then we can get rid of, you know, our Pedence, as it were, and bring in a City mid. There, there's a bunch of different ways you can you can play this, really. The, one, the things that I have kind of on my radar right now in terms of players to potentially get rid of. So Castagne was one of them at some point, but I thought I could potentially keep him there. But he's going to be out injured for a little bit. Maybe we bring him back in after the international break uh for the for that um uh for that fulham fixture uh which would actually be one game after the international break so game week 10 but again that'll be when we're bringing in city assets so again we might have to prioritize some other things there also martinez in goal that's potentially something that can happen 
uh, going into game week nine because these runner fixtures look fantastic. I mean, absolutely fantastic. You know, all these teams are FDR rating of two except for Wolves and West Ham. Wolves don't really create much. West Ham kind of do. But again, could be quite quite a good spell there. He might be five million by the time we go to get him, but that's the risk that we uh, that we take uh, on that front. But again, could be could be quite valuable there. If Bale is playing, you know, you know, really really well and is taking away points from Kane, then we can always downgrade Kane to Werner if he's playing well because Chelsea's fixtures are starting to be, you know, somewhat decent now. You know, if there's a major injury in that team, we can potentially change some things up there. But like the players that we're definitely sticking with is James Rodriguez, Calvert Lewin, Ings, um, Salah, Robertson, Ailing now, uh, Lamptey. You know these sorts of players are going to stay in there. Kilman, Mitchell, they'll stay in there until I look to wildcard in uh, for game week 16 because that's basically the last time you get to use the wildcard. But by then we'll know what type of double game weeks we could be experiencing going into this so there could be situations where um so here we'll, we'll know these all these fixtures and, and and whatnot how it's going uh i would only have two days to think about potentially uh wall carding which would be uh very uh very interesting um but then we have uh these fixtures a couple days immediately after it and i basically have to look at these fixtures in january here like the game 18 19 could be like the double double game week fixtures and by then i'll know more about the cup competitions and that sort of stuff and we could set ourselves up for good fixtures going forward so like as an example we don't have uh let's see start of the year who's got like a really good um the good start to the year um so united at home to aston villa then away to fulham then they play liverpool which is an ideal then home to sheffield united so that's a pretty good run barring liverpool for the most like on paper you know it could be could be quite a good run so we'll have to see kind of how how that uh how that plays out but um yeah for the most part the players that i'm looking to stick with my team is is for the time being for sure is uh at least on paper, all the way up until I go to wildcard. Ings, Calvert Lewin, James Rodriguez, uh, Salah, Kilman Robertson, Ailing, Mitchell Lamptey, Steer, because Steer is just a 4.0 non playing goalkeeper, and Burke probably just because, like, maybe I get Suchek at some point, but again, it's, you know, whatever at that point. Um, but yeah, so this is how the. Uh, that's not how the team looks like. Let's refresh that. That's how the team looks like. So if Hamas doesn't play, at least we can have Burke or, or Mitchell or or somebody come off our come off our bench. Uh, Burke is more likely to get some type of points just because he is typically a substitute or can start um, some games. Hamas, if he's available, will probably play. Does Hamas play on the Saturday? No, so he has till Sunday and should probably be okay. He was hobbling around a little bit. Um, but he said he could probably have the whole week to kind of rest up. And maybe they play against Newcastle. He actually says, you know, kind of chill out. Just pick passes and we'll take you all after 60 minutes when we're up 3-0 because we're up against Newcastle. So, um, last note before we uh, go to, you know, log off here for the night. Just kind of looking at the captaincy here i'm still not 100 percent on salah because west ham they did have that blip versus spurs where they conceded three goals inside of 15 minutes and salah has been pretty much a go-to for me uh when he's at home and it just makes the most sense however west ham just defensive numbers have been a lot better salah shooting has still been as it's been and he could have scored easily twice versus uh sheffield united but uh, Brighton do pose an interesting prospect, and with me benching Lamptey, I might go full gung ho and just put the put the captaincy on Son. I would favor Son over Kane for those that are wondering. So if you had a pick between, let's say you don't have Salah, you don't have a City player, and you have Kane and Son, if I had to choose between two, I would choose Son just because if it's Kane dropping in deep, 
you know, trying to avoid the Brighton press and pinging the ball over the top. Son's going to be the one that gets on it, which ends up being more points for him. And if you have Bale, potentially, for those that have brought him in and expect him to start this game week, I would say that that is uh, potentially uh, an option as an outside uh, differential. But, uh, yeah, we'll run through the team one more time. McCarthy in goal versus Aston Villa away. Ailing versus Leicester at home. Kilman and Pedence versus Crystal Palace at home. Robertson and Salah versus West Ham. Currently the captaincy on Salah, but somewhat swaying to potentially towards Son. Uh, James Rodriguez and Calvert-Lewin versus Newcastle away. Ings versus Aston Villa at home as well. We also have the Spurs duo versus Brighton at home. We have Steer on the bench, who's not going to play. Burke, Mitchell, Lamptey is the order of our bench. Um, but yeah, if, if it's up to, uh, if it's coin flip for me this week, it's it's Son or Salah, almost certainly uh, this game week. Uh, Son and Son Kane Salah, they don't get uh, they don't get dropped um, from their teams, and I think that they could definitely be the best best possible shout. And another thing is that midfielders get one extra point for scoring a goal. They get less bonus, but I think that both of them could potentially hurt the, res the respective teams that they're playing. But it may come down to a bit of a, a bit of a, like a literary a deadline decision uh, for me. But for now, it's on Salah. I maybe just go with uh, Old Faithful, as it were, with Salah. And um, and just hope that, he, uh, hope that he bounces back and does the business. It was the first time that I actually blanked. Uh, for captaincy um, only the second time that Salah has blanked uh, all season he's got four out of six returns so far this season uh, but yeah it was the only time I blanked as a captaincy option uh, this season was game week six because the first five I had uh, a, uh, I went uh, Aubameyang in games uh, one and two because I didn't have Salah because I had double Liverpool defense I thought that could cover it, which is okay, but not hat trick good. Uh, game week three, uh, I believe I captained Salah. Let's actually go back. So game week one, game week one we captained the Bamiang. Game week two we captained the Bamiang as well, so that was correct. Uh, game week three we captained Salah, could have captained Fernandez potentially. That was an option. Uh, game week four, we captain Salah, so that was good. Game week five, we captain Salah, who did well. And game week six, uh, we captain Salah, and he didn't do anything. So maybe it wasn't, it wasn't meant to be, but uh, I think that this game week, uh, like I said, Sonner, Sonner Salah is the, uh, the potential uh, go-tos uh, for me. So... That is going to do it for this deadline-ish stream. If you haven't done so already, make sure to like, subscribe, follow, all that good stuff on all the platforms. It's PilotFlame226. As you can see down below me, links are also in the description. And also make sure to check out the poll over on YouTube. Let me know what time you would like the preview streams to be because I may be having to move them from Monday at 7 p.m. EDT because uh, it's getting uh, darker outside. So you can't do outside activities unless you have lights. Uh, outside so I might have to do it a little bit later which means I have to go outside and get things done around the house and whatnot sooner or exercise or whatever uh, that you might want to do when there's daylight out so let me know what times work best for you because I think moving it later might work better for for everyone I've seen a lot of people you know like I said tune in later on um, or, ma or making comments on YouTube and that sort of stuff you know once I've already um, kind of logged off for the night and that sort of stuff which is good to see that people are still interacting even uh when uh i've uh, gone in uh I, I gone into bed for the night as there are you know many many players from all around the world that uh some people ha are eating their breakfast when they're when they're watching the stream and some people are eating their dinner or eating their lunch there's many different time zones and that's why it is a global game and that's what we like about the fpl community as well Thank you all for watching and hope you all have a good game week seven and until the next one, take care.